Welcome to this video. The subject we're going to look at in this talk is jaundice. Now the term jaundice actually means a yellowing and it describes a yellow discoloration of the skin. It's also visible in the, uh, in the eyes, especially in the yellow parts of the eyes and to some degree on mucous membranes. So we're, just, we're talking about a yellow discoloration. And as we're going to see, this really is, is a symptom more than a disease in its own right. Now jaundice is caused in any condition where you get an increase in the amount of a pigment called bilirubin in the blood. So there's a yellow discoloration of the skin, sclera of the eyes and mucous membranes due to an increase of the amount of the pigment bilirubin circulating in the bloodstream. Usually this is first seen in the sclera of the eye actually, that's where it's first noticeable. That there's a yellowing in the sclera of the eye. Another feature that comes with this condition very commonly is itching. Um, patients complain of pruritus, very, very itchy sort of condition. And one other thing that sometimes causes confusion is an old fashioned name for jaundice is icterus. Patients are sometimes being described as eteric, but it really means jaundiced. And the term that most people use these days is jaundice, so that's the one we're going to use in this talk. Now, as usual in trying to understand abnormal conditions, it's essential to have a reasonable grasp of the physiology first. So what we're going to do now is look at the normal physiology. And again, it's helpful if you build up the diagram with me. And what we're looking at is the physiology of bilirubin, which is the pigment which is found in the blood in excess when a patient is jaundiced. Now this account starts off with the breaking up of red blood cells. Red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow under the influence of erythropoietin. And after about 100 days, 120 days, they reach the end of their lifespan because red cells do not contain a nucleus. And the red cells are broken up. This takes place in, in organs such as the spleen. And it's referred to as hemolysis. So this is the start of the process that red cells are broken up at the end of their lifespan. So here we have a red cell and we'll try and picture it as being broken up here. Remember red cells are darker on the outside because they're biconcave discs. So the red cells are breaking up or being broken up. So the breakup of red cells. And when cells are broken up, blood is heme, lysis means to break up. So this process is referred to as hemolysis. So hemolysis takes place breaking up the red blood cells. Now quite a few of the components of the red blood cells, the amino acids for example, are recycled and used to make, well used in other processes in the body. But one of the pigments that was in the haemoglobin molecule, the bilirubin, the body does not recycle. So what this means is that when red blood cells are broken up, bilirubin is produced as a byproduct of that process. So this releases bilirubin. initially just into the bloodstream. Now the next thing that happens is that this bilirubin is taken up by the liver. So um, let's imagine that um, this is a liver here. Shaped very vaguely like that. So the liver. So the liver takes up the bilirubin. 
And then the liver concentrates the bilirubin and puts it into bile, which then leaves the liver via the bile ducts. So you might remember from anatomy that you have the right and left hepatic duct joining to form the common hepatic duct. And of course here you have the uh, gallbladder. And further down these ducts are joined, the common bile duct is joined by the ducts from the pancreas. Lots of ducts in the pancreas. Producing pancreatic digestive enzymes which come down and join here. And this of course all goes into the, uh, the duodenum, part of the uh, small intestine, the first part of the small intestine. So the bilirubin is taken up by the liver. Now to get from the uh, site of hemolysis to the liver, the bilirubin is actually transported in albumin in the plasma because it's not water soluble at this stage. But the liver joins the bilirubin with other substances and makes it soluble so that it can now enter the, uh, the bile ducts. And bilirubin, and actually it's partly oxidized at this stage, biliverdin as well. Bilirubin and biliverdin, the two bile pigments. So bili, biliverdin is the oxidation product of biliverdin. They're, they're actually in a sense the same uh, pigment, just one's oxidized. So the liver collects these and puts them into the bile ducts. And then once they're in the bile ducts, they're referred to as bile pigments, and the bile is stored in the gallbladder. And the function of the gallbladder is to store and to concentrate the bile. Now one of the really clever things about this piece of physiology is that although the bilirubin is a waste product that the body needs to get rid of, it's actually used for a useful purpose. It's incorporated into the bile. And bile is very useful because it can emulsify fats, increasing the surface area of fat, allowing it to be acted on by digestive enzymes such as lipase to break it down into fatty acids. And as well as that, bile helps to um, deodorize and color the feces. So the waste pigment is, is usefully used. So when it's required, when food, especially fatty food, enters the duodenum, the gallbladder will eject the bile containing the bilirubin into the duodenum. So the, bili, the bilirubin is passed from the red blood cells to the liver via the gallbladder now down into the duodenum. Here the bile will help to emulsify fats and colour and deodorise the faeces. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the bilirubin will stay and will ultimately be excreted in the faeces. It will carry on through the small intestine, the large intestine, and be excreted from the body in the faeces. So that's the end product of quite a lot of the, the bilirubin. But we have another organ in the body, the kidney. And some of the bilirubin is actually reabsorbed from the gut. Now in the gut, the bilirubin is acted on by bacteria. And some of it is actually reabsorbed back into the blood. But by the time it's been in the gut, it's been acted on by bacteria, it's actually changed its nature. And it's no longer referred to as, um, it's no longer referred to as bilirubin when it's reabsorbed from the gut. When it's reabsorbed from the gut, it's referred to as urobilinogen. And this urobilinogen, which is reabsorbed from the gut, is water soluble, so it's taken up by the kidney. And the kidney incorporates it into the urine, which goes down the ureter to the bladder via the urethra and is eliminated from the body. So ultimately, the bilirubin is excreted from the body in one of two ways, 